what's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, Kados launched their Kickstarter for the Kados Mine, and I wanted to talk a little more about this little mini PC. Now, I've done a few videos on it, and as you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny. It's actually got a 12-core Raptor Lake CPU with 32 gigabytes of RAM, and they are offering two different models with different CPUs over on their Kickstarter. The one that we have here is powered by the i7-1360P, but they're also offering the i5-1340P, which is going to come in a bit cheaper. Overall, I've actually been having a really good time with this. I've done a lot of testing with it. It'll actually support two M.2 NVMe SSDs, and yeah, it is coming in as the smallest and thinnest 12-core mini PC we've ever taken a look at over here on the channel, but there's a bit more to it. Now, it'll function all by itself, just like it is. Single cable operation mode, so we can do video out and power in over one of those USB Type-C ports. Makes it really easy to connect to a monitor that supports it. But what I think makes this mini PC so interesting is the mine port on the bottom. They're going to be offering different accessories that you can dock this with. They've got an I.O. docking station, which will add more I.O. They'll be offering a monitor system, which turns this into a full-fledged all-in-one PC. They've got a little makeshift laptop dock that you can set this up with. And they also have the graphics dock with an RTX 4060 Ti. But like I mentioned, all by itself, it's a fully functional mini PC that actually puts out some really great performance. That 1360p can definitely put down the CPU performance. It's got built-in Iris XE graphics, which does allow us to game to an extent, but you know, we can definitely add more GPU power to this. But I'd say for an everyday desktop like it sits, it does work out really well. Document editing, email checking, 4K video playback, you could get a little bit of light video editing and photo editing out of the way on this. And like I mentioned, we can game on the built-in graphics like it is. Here we have OG Skyrim, 1080p, medium settings, running at a constant 60 performs really well, and I'm just using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Moving over to Street Fighter VI, with this I did have to drop it down to 720p low settings, but uh, as you can see from Afterburner in the top left hand corner, we are running this newer fighting game at 60fps. And uh, another one I tested here was Cyberpunk 2077, which wasn't as bad as I thought it would be on the integrated graphics. We got an average of 56 FPS, 720p low with Cyberpunk 2077 here. Of course, it's not a 4K gaming machine yet until we add something like the uh, Mind Dock or a higher end GPU using an Oculink adapter. This does have an internal 2230 M.2 SSD right out of the box, but we've also got this little hatch here on the bottom which will support another M.2 SSD, 2230, and the internal one is actually PCIe 4.0. This one here is PCIe 3.0, so we're not going to get the kind of bandwidth we can out of the internal SSD slot, but I have done some testing with an Oculink eGPU. I've tested out the uh, GPD G1. This has the Radeon RX 7600 MXT, and when it's paired up with the Kados Mine, this thing puts out some amazing performance. I'm running Windows 11 here, and as you can see, I've set this up in the horizontal position. Actually sits right under my monitor pretty nicely. And I'm just using power from the wall instead of running another cable from that USB 4 up front on the G1e GPU. We've got that i7-1360p, 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5, and the 7600M. So we've got that external GPU connected over that extra M.2 slot on the bottom. And uh, here's Forza Horizon 5. I understand that this game is very well optimized. I do have Afterburner running up in the top left hand corner. And the 1360p in the Kados mine actually runs it up to 32 watts. Most of the time, since we're not working with the IGP, we don't even need to hit 30 watts with it. On average, we're at 25. And from the settings, you can see that we are at high. The only thing I disable is ray tracing with these external cards. And we're at 4K with this, getting an average of 93 FPS on this mini PC setup. AMD doesn't consider the 7600 MXT a 4K card. They don't even consider it a 1440p card, but in my testing with this external GPU, I found that high 1440p with most new AAA games is totally possible as long as you have enough CPU power. But 1080p Ultra is really where this card shines. Next thing I wanted to show off were a few benchmarks, and first up we've got 3D Mark Night Raid, coming in with a 42,607. Firestrike gave us a really impressive 20,240. And finally, we've got Time Spy here with a 9,549. And you don't specifically need to use the GPD G1 external GPU. That's just a newer one on the market that supports Oculink right out of the box. You can head over to Amazon and buy an Oculink adapter. 
Comes with the board, comes with the cable. You will need a power supply and a GPU, but you could put something together that's even more powerful than this for probably cheaper if you've already got a GPU laying around. It's definitely one of the most interesting mini PCs we've ever taken a look at on the channel, and it's the world's smallest 12-core x86 mini PC on the market right now. Now, one of the big reasons I've always been a big fan of Kados products is the build quality. I've never had an issue with any of their boards or anything like that, and this is built like a tank. I mean, the way they put this together is very, very impressive. And another thing I like about their boards is they use this black PCB. It's not going to make a difference with performance or heat dissipation or anything like that, but I think it looks really good. Like we saw, we can access one of these 2230 NVMe SSDs externally, but we have this other one here, which is PCIe 4.0. This comes with a one terabyte drive pre-installed and that 32 gigabytes of RAM. And you might notice this does have an internal battery. It's not actually here to power the unit. It's a standby battery. So you can put this in standby mode and you can get up to five hours of standby with it. But it's great because you can put it to sleep, unplug it, go to your next location, boot it back up, and you can start right where you left off. When it comes down to it, the Kados mine can be used in many different situations. If you need a little office PC or a light PC for email checking, web browsing, 4K video playback at the house, it'll work for that. But then when it's time to game, you could always go with an Oculink setup or you could use their GPU dock. And the mine graphics dock actually has an RTX 4060 Ti, so you can definitely expect some really good performance. But the best thing about this is it connects over that mine link port. And this is actually a PCIe 5.0 port. It's running at the same kind of protocol. And with the mine graphics, up to 64 giga transfers per second, as opposed to like 32 with Thunderbolt 3. And in total, the mine link port will actually do up to 256 mega transfers per second. So with the other accessories they offer, like the IO dock, you can definitely expect some quick transfer speeds there. But with the Kados Mind and all of the testing I've done with it so far, I've been having a blast with it. And remember, I've got the i7-1360p version. They also offer that i5-1340p, which is going to offer a little less GPU and CPU performance. If I can get my hands on the 1340p model, I will run some benchmarks on both of them and make another video. But, you know, the main thing I really want to get is that Mind graphics dock. I think it would be really awesome using this Mind Link port with an RTX 4060 Ti. It's an all-in-one unit there. Power supply and everything is built into the graphics dock. So all you need to do is just kind of drop this on top. You'll be running Windows 11 or even Linux if you wanted to. And you can be up and gaming with some really good frame rates out of this little PC. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing what this thing can really do, I'll leave some links to some other videos that I created. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave a link to Gadas's official website and the Kickstarter, just in case you're interested in backing this mini PC. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.